All right, charisma. Yep. Charisma. Uh, where are you from originally? Where'd, where'd you grow up? I'm from Las Vegas, Nevada. You're from Vegas? Yep. That's, that's where you were born? Born and raised. Mm. Mm-hmm. And that's, you're still based there? Yeah. You're just out here on Figaro Street? Yeah, just testing the waters. Just uh, trying a different market? Yeah. What was your family like growing up? Um, not the greatest. Uh, my parents were constantly fighting. And, uh, they're both addicts, so my dad's like a raging alcoholic and my mom's a raging meth head. Mm. And that doesn't really mix. <laughs> um, so by the time like they got divorced when I was 12, it was like, oh, finally, <laughs> like, I'll actually get some sleep for once. <laughs> Um, and then when they got divorced, my mom dipped out to New Mexico and my dad, like, is just so, like, absent. Uh, he just got me and my sister an apartment, pretty much just, like, got us an apartment and every now and then he would, like, drop off money. He was just never there. And... So you guys raised yourself? Yeah. Your older sister or younger sister? Uh, she's two years older than me. But... I love her to death, but she's definitely like, we're like fire and ice, you know, <laughs> complete opposites. Sisters. Yep. <laughs> what was the, what would you say is the roughest part of your childhood? Um, my best friend was murdered uh, when I was 13 on the second to last day of seventh grade. Um, she was at one of her friend's house because she lived on like the opposite end of town from me. Um, yeah, she was at her friend's house, and uh, she was walking away, and I guess the girl was playing with her dad's gun, and it unloaded into her stomach, or, like, shot through my best friend's stomach. And, you know, I wasn't there, but, like, that girl really played, like, a very big part in my childhood and, like, upcoming, and because she was, like, the blonde, like, cheerleader president of the student council flag mm-hmm. football girl, and... I was just like the nerdy, the only girl in like the gifted and talented program. Like I was like really smart, but kind of like weird. <laughs> like there's something off about me. <laughs> Did you finish high school? Yes, I actually finished high school in 2017 when I was supposed to be out in 2018. So I did a year early. How old are you now? 23 years old. 23. Mm-hmm. How did you first get introduced to this lifestyle? Um, through just toxic relationships with men honestly um yeah it's just the men that like i go for always end up introducing me to another guy who knows a guy who knows a guy and you know and eventually you run into a pimp yeah <laughs> um i wouldn't say like i have a pimp there's just a lot of guys that uh, if they know that you're working they'll try to like stay by you until like you make the money and break bread, break bread. But me and Red, like me and my girlfriend pretty much just work for ourselves. We don't let. Do you keep all your money? I mean, money is such a like profound thing to me because I'm always like abundant, like wherever I'm at, I always have what I need. I know like, you know, God got me. I'm really strong in my faith always, so. I'd rather break red than, you know, start a problem. So you're paying guys to protect you or whatever? Yeah, because they have my back. So, you know, take care of me and I'll take care of you. It's no biggie. I love being generous and, but. And do you, in, in Vegas, do you live in a, do you have an apartment or do you stay in a motel? Yeah, I stay in motels, like weeklies. Um, I haven't had an apartment since, um, six months ago, honestly, like six months ago with my mom, actually, she took off with my son and, um, it really, it really fucked me up. <laughs> um, we got into a fight because she started, she relapsed and started doing meth again because of my ex-boyfriend who thought that would be a good idea to give her some meth. And uh, we just kept fighting and fighting and fighting and it got like physical. And she like, I left for two days so I wouldn't get more physical with her. Came back home and my apartment has 
been ran through. It wasn't even 48 hours. My baby daddy and my ex-boyfriend came together and decided, you know, we're gonna drill through the locks and make this a bando. And there was just a bunch of like bums, <laughs> like with my stuff in my bags, packing my whole life away. My whole life was just in these bags. And um, there was a paper that said, my mom filed a restraining order against me. So, you know, at that point, I just like looked at all this like material things and was like, you know what guys, like, I'm gonna let you like go through each bag <laughs> one by one and I'm gonna let you keep most of this shit, but you know, there are like some things, like sentimental things that like I would like to keep. And sure enough, these motherfuckers <laughs> went through each bag and I really let them keep about 90% because, you know, I don't have my son. Uh, and that was really, like my son was my saving grace. Um, when like I looked at my son, I knew like this life had a purpose for me. I knew, I I know what love and life is, you know? And for her to take that away from me, really hurt. How old is he? He's two and a half so August 15th. And the father is where? The streets in Las Vegas, addicted to fentanyl. Um, I actually went looking for him about a week ago and I asked some guy at the gas station, like, have you seen Trevor, have you seen him? And they're like, oh, well, he's usually in the alley. <laughs> And it's funny because um, when I first like went to the streets, I was living in an alley on like Fremont in Las Vegas, <laughs> Fremont Street. What, what is your drug? Uh, crack. I only smoke crack now. <laughs> I actually just got off of fentanyl and blues. So I'm really proud about that. But I'm just cracking now. <laughs> mm. And you're working the streets in Vegas or internet? Um, yeah, like ads, it's more internet and whatever my girlfriend, like she goes out on the streets and you know, she feels it out because there's only like so much I'm comfortable doing. I'm more of like an internet or like networking, like, you know, like I go on like actual like dates and like hang out and you know, just smoke and get paid. <laughs> How do you feel about this lifestyle? How does it affect you emotionally? Mm, it's really heavy, like, on my emotional state. Um, I've always had mental health problems, but, um, yeah, it's just a really heavy thing to deal with. <laughs> These guys are... Really cold. The streets are just so cold. That's the best way I can put it, is cold. Um, what, what, kind, what kind of guys are typically your, your clients? They're, they're married guys, they're guys that are just in town to party? Um, yeah, it's usually like married men, like big trucks, <laughs> like big pickup trucks. Um, just being dirty dogs. <laughs> they're usually drunk or, yeah, uh -huh. always drunk, <laughs> always smell like alcohol. And just, what, yeah. what, what have you learned about men from doing this kind of work? I learned about men? Do you, do you see men differently because of what you've seen? Yeah, I'm, I'm honestly a man hater. <laughs> like, men just like are not shit to me. That's why I got with my girlfriend Red because she's just such a cool ass fucking chick. She's, she's a cool do ass you, woman. Do you, so, I mean, do you hate the guys that you're servicing? Um, yeah, about 75% <laughs> about of the time. Um, yeah, <laughs> but I mean, I have like a fiance like who's in prison. <laughs> uh, he used to be a pimp, but he actually like saved me. He found me on Las Vegas Boulevard in Fremont and was like, you know, like we're not gonna live like this. Like we're gonna have like a normal life together. Like we're on, we're on the streets for a little bit, but we're gonna be all right. And that's Chicago, my fucking, that's my baby. He's facing organized crime and theft and burglary in Las Vegas. But, and how are you guys going to support yourselves by by you doing what you're doing? Um, I'm hoping I can just do this until one day I just stack up enough money to go to school or land in some kind of like stable housing to get back on my feet because everything like the rug was just ripped completely out from under me. But I know if I like stay strong in my faith, then. You know, 
God will put me into the right place at the right time. And yeah, I'll make it out. And I want to do like nails and hair and like, you know, all that basic bitch <laughs> shit, the basic white girl shit. Do you, uh, do you have any regrets in your life? A lot, <laughs> a lot. What are, what are some of your regrets? The biggest regret I have is ever smoking anything off of foil, like freebasing. <laughs> Because that led to, because it's not that I necessarily regret drugs. It's like the way I do drugs and um, mostly like not standing up for myself or yeah, standing up for myself or using my voice when I could have or um, just not do, not trusting my gut, you know? And it's crazy because one of my teachers in elementary school on a test, she saw that like I erased an answer and circled a different one. And the one I erased was the right answer. And she put a little note on there, like, always go with your first guess. And that's really stuck with me because like, you know, what if I would have just like went with like my first reaction or like, you know, went with my, you know, my first guess, my first choice, then, you know, probably would have got it right. But I live for the chaotic lifestyle, I guess. Yeah. But, but <laughs> You had bad things happen to you? Yeah. <laughs> I've been like sexually assaulted, I've been raped, I've been drugged, I've been actually kidnapped, <laughs> held for ransom, and just, you know, ultimately betrayed, betrayed by my mother, betrayed by my father. Um, I was kicked out on my 18th birthday, and uh, my dad pretty much, like, he knew, like, I was having to, like, sleep with men for like a place to stay. And he didn't like, he didn't care. He would just sit there and be like, well, like you better figure it out because I'm getting tired. It's getting late. I have to go home and you're not going to my house. So you better figure it out. And that was all just because I was with like a drug dealing piece of shit um, that I refused to, you know, stick up for myself. And because, you know, this guy had made me so dependent on Xanax. That was like my first thing. Um, and this guy just fed my addiction, so, you know? And I felt like my boyfriend was there for me more than my dad was, so why would I choose my own father over my boyfriend who literally, you know, gives me everything I need? And when does your current boyfriend get out of prison? Mm, he's still going to trial right now, so. Oh, so he is waiting for his verdict? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but he already has priors of burglary. <laughs> uh, he's only 31 and he spent 10 years like incarcerated. Hmm. Did so, you say your, your choice in men is? Uh, felons. Part of the problem? <laughs> yeah, the problem, children, felons, uh, tatted white boys pretty much is my type. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> where, do you, where do you see yourself in five years? Um. I hope that like I'm in school or like finished school. Um, ultimately, I would just like to be able to be my son's life again. And that's all like I could really ask for. Yeah. Do you, you get depressed sometimes living this life? Yeah, a lot. It's gotta be hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you know, you can't like let it show. You just kind of got to thug it out. You got to be tough. Yeah. Got to be as hard as you are strong, you know? And sometimes you don't really have a choice but to just walk what, what it like you, you talk it. What do you think people don't understand about women that do this kind of work? Um, it could be anyone. Uh, honestly, a year ago, I talked so much shit about <laughs> girls like this and, oh, like people living in tents and, oh, like they're good for nothing. How would, could they let that happen? And uh, now here I am <laughs> with nothing, nothing to show and it could, it could really be anyone, you know? And so stay humble or else God will do it for you. <laughs> That's for sure. How much money will you make a night in Vegas? Um, I shoot for like at least thousand dollars, you know? Um, and usually it's at least like $500 a client. So not bad. And you, you guys will go to a Hotel room or? Yeah, we tell them that they have to have a hotel room if they want any service. Yeah. And then if they 
only want like a car, then that's when they pay more and more, you know, because they don't want to get a hotel room or excuses, been, excuses, more excuses, arrested? more money. There you have to pay us. <laughs> have you been arrested in Vegas? Yeah, uh, a couple times. That's actually met, where I met my uh, girlfriend, Red, <laughs> was in city jail in 2019. But then I didn't talk to her for years. And sure enough, my uh, boyfriend that's in prison right now, Chicago, introduced me to her. So, or like reintroduced me to her. <laughs> and it was crazy. I was like, wait, I know you. She's like, I know you. I remember you. Uh, they called me Harley Quinn <laughs> when I was in jail because I had a heart tattoo that I got with one of my exes for whatever reason. I got it removed now, but yeah. And I had my whole head was just blonde as fuck, <laughs> like glowing. It was so blonde. Mm. And I'd have it in like two braids and I had a black eye. So they call me Harley Quinn. And yeah, I went to jail the first time when I was 18. Uh, it was actually like a couple days after my 18th birthday because my sister showed up at the apartment and was like, uh, you can't be here, what are you doing here? And I got into a fight with my ex-boyfriend and I'm not gonna let her fight my boyfriend. So um, me and my sister scrapped it out and I had pictures on my old iPhone uh, of me like literally sitting there. She whooped my booty, but <laughs> I had a black eye, like fat lip and I ended up getting being the one to get arrested. <laughs> but no, it's mainly like domestic violence. They were, I've had a couple of those. Um, battery, disorderly conduct. Um, and the most recent one is, what is it? Possession um, and burglary with burglary tools. <laughs> Where is your sister now? She's actually in Wheatland, California. What is she doing? She has lashes okay. <laughs> and she's living the dream. She lives in like 10 acres of like just beautiful grass hills. And her fiance is like uh, renovating like a double wide trailer to fit her standards. Cause she's this bougie ass fucking Vegas girl. And it's really beautiful, you know, cause my sister's been through her share of shit. Uh, yeah. Like she's, she actually like, played a part in like why I started hanging out with like these like piece of shit people because when I was a freshman she was a senior and um, you know it was just like turn up party drink and Xanax were they really popping at that time so yeah and when I'm on Xanax like I think everybody is just like so cool and I'm so cool and I can get down with anybody. Did you feel like your parents being drug users or alcoholics kind of opened the door for your drug use? Yeah, my mom is the one that gave me my first Xanax. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, and that was because of my anxiety from my best friend being killed. I didn't really want to like socialize. I wouldn't, I would have a panic attack even pulling up to school so bad I'd be throwing up. And she was just like tired. She, so, you know, she gave me like a little football. And sure enough, like, oh, this one's good, this one's good. And then my sister started doing them, started doing them together. And then we started like <laughs> selling them and one thing to another. Yeah. But yeah, my mother definitely played a big part. Charisma, what would you say is the most important lesson you've learned in your life? Um, God is good. God is always good, no matter you know, what happens, God will always be good. <laughs> you believe in God? Yeah. And he, he would, I mean, what, what, where does God play a role in, in your situation that you're in now? Um, he keeps, like, he watches over me, he keeps me protected, and only puts me around people that are going to, like, teach me something, you know, whether, like, it kind of sucks to have to learn, but you know, I'm humble enough to know that I'm like naive enough to learn. I'm always open to learning, you know? Uh, to be taught is a better word. Humble enough to be taught. Cause you can be out here and, cause when I was a teenager, that's really what like got me into a lot of um, bad situations is 
thinking that I knew what I was doing. Um, nowadays, I don't know shit. <laughs> like, people ask me something, I'm like, I don't know shit. And I, most, I really don't, you know? Because you can think that you know, but you don't know. You know, there's always like, the, like perception, you know? Like, you don't know all the ends and outs mm. of things. You think, you think you do, and then there's always that, you know, one thing. All right. Charisma, thank you so much for sharing your story. Thank you. <laughs> wish you lots of luck out here on, in L.A. Thank you. Be careful out there. All right. <laughs> thank you very much.